another part in my DIY analog synthesizer tutorial videos in this video I'm going to be covering oscillator hard or should I say oscillator synchronization so what that is that's a type of cross modulation where we get a sort of crazy sweeping effect where we sort of introduce more harmonics than is initially within our waveform as you heard on the intro to this video it's quite a classic old um, effect used since back in the vintage synthesizers of say the 70s and 80s so nothing fantastically revolutionary or new so anyway it's just an, uh, what I found a useful addition not every single synthesizer actually has this well certainly a mono synthesizer actually has these effects or even polysynths to be honest with you I mean the fam most famous ones I probably could name are the Prophet 5 as far as polyphonics are concerned Prophet 5 the OBX and the OB8, the sort of Oberheim polyphonic range, and the Jupiter 8 and Roland Jupiter 6. So basically our main ingredient is that we need two oscillators to be able to, so one synchronizes the other one. So say for instance, this is our initial frequency of our master. We have a master and a slave oscillator. So if this is our master, so this one will be doing the timer, or the, shall I say the timing, and let's just say that's, I don't know, 30, 36 hertz, it's not necessarily 36 hertz, and our, so that's our master, and then we have our slave. And our slave, we will want, our slave oscillator, we will want to be at a slightly higher frequency than our master for this effect to work. And we can get this effect working quite statically. However, if we want to have that kind of automatic sweep, what we need is some way of modulating the frequency of one of the oscillators. And it's normally done by modulating the pitch frequency of the master so we say our slave oscillator is I don't know let's just say 55 Hertz and what happens when we cross modulate the two is we will reset the cycle of our slave resets according to the master hence we get that that harmonic that funny harmonic effect so we're actually stopping its its proper cycle again this is one of the things I've never quite known the actual proper way it's ex I've never quite understood the uh, proper explanation of how it actually works anyway so what I'm going to do now is uh, basically show you how I put my hard um, hard sync uh, circuit together so what I have is VCO2 or oscillator 2 which is the master and oscillator 1 which is the slave so we have from say oscillator 2 so oscillator 2 and from our TL074 quad op amp our sawtooth comes out via a resistor as it does as it goes to the sort of the mixer as well so it comes out to via a resistor put question mark on that one because again this is a you can kind of tailor this to your desired value so question mark on that one so it comes out of the op amp 
and then what we do is we will send that into the non-inverting side of an operational amplifier which is the plus inverting will be the minor side and on the minor side I will use a potentiometer trimmer very small trimmer as a voltage divider to the plus voltage and minus voltage respectively so let's just call that 100k just to keep it nice and tidy so there's 100k and that's our voltage divider so this is oscillator 2's saw out which goes into this op amp here you can use a dual op amp for this or even a single op amp depending because if you have a dual you've got another side to use for anything else later you can still send it to a single so i'll just call this our tl 072 okay and obviously from pins 8 to plus of plus rails and pin 4 will go to our minus rail that's just the power for the op amp I'll try and eliminate this because I'm, gu I'm guessing as I'm doing more of these tutorials you guys are becoming more familiar with the sort of obvious um, universal sort of pin in configurations for these op amps the dual and the quad op amps but I'll just throw it in because I can't assume everybody who's watching this is on the same level and everybody who's watching this has actually watched all the videos from the sort of the, the beginning etc and so what will happen then is we will have from here this very point here is our output we will have a square or should I say a variable a variable pulse? Why well, I say it's a variable pulse because we've got the voltage divider on it. As we turn that voltage divider, we can vary the width of that pulse, and it's basically like how pulse width modulation works. Now, this is not a circuit that I copied from anywhere. This is a circuit I kind of just put together myself as an experimentation, and voila, it worked. So that sync pulse comes out. You don't have to do this next part. We can then send that to another op amp. If you had a dual, you could send it to the other side. And we just use it as a as in a voltage follower buffer configuration. So what we send in is exactly what comes out, exactly the same phase, no inversion whatsoever, same voltage. And then that we may want to trim down. I'll talk to you about why we have this. So let's just call that R1, uh, T1, and R2. Again, this is a question mark value because it depending on how hard, how, how should I say, how intense you want the effect. So we can kind of vary that. And we're going to send that to a switch. And we, we can do this either way around here. And then we're going to go into a diode but not just any diode. We are going into a, if you know what the symbol for this is, we are going into a shot key diode. So we come out of the shot key diode via the switch, SW1, which is just a basic on off switch. And now we're sending that is into oscillator two. So this is the TL074 of oscillator 2 sorry oscillator 1 my mistake oscillator 1 and we'll say that's pin 2 pin 3 and pin 1 no, so, so pin 2 pin 1 output inverting and non-inverting and, and if we go back to our saw core oscillator video we can see this is the point here pin 2 which actually has the um, we have a voltage divider set up here where we can vary the um, we can vary the shape of the sawtooth and we can also use that to trim the symmetry for our triangle or a sine wave and we're sending that into exactly the same spot so we're going to sum that into there and like I said we have that switch 
I tried this with a normal signal diode, a 1N4148, and it didn't work very well. It sort of, it was too much, it, how can I describe it? The effect wasn't as strong. I also tried this with a few other types of um, diodes, a shock key diode and a few different Zener diodes. Like I said, it's all experimentation. This is not, oh, somebody said, this is how you do it. This is how it must be done. This is the only bloody way in the world you can do it. You know, it, make these things up, improve, you know, see a circuit design and think, right, how can I better that? You know, or tailor it to something that's going to work for me. I tried the original circuit, it didn't work. So I tried my own. This is exactly what I did here. I tried a few different circuits and they didn't work. So this is why I ended up sort of having a go at trying to do something myself. This is not a regular way of doing a hard synchronization circuit. But, um, this is what works for me, as I said. And boom, I'm quite pleased with the results, to be honest with you. And that's all there is to it. So out of oscillator two, which is the master, which goes into these, um, can we make a comparator, a variable square stroke pulse width circuit? So what we do is basically we need to trim this and we want to try and trim it. So we've either got a, a negative pulse, a narrow pulse, or we can trim it. So we've got a, 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 a narrow positive pulse. Again, this is one of the things, because we've got this trimmer here, you can vary that, keep tinkering, and listen to how the how they interact harmonic and sound-wise, and you can trim that till you're pretty much satisfied with it. The only other thing that I haven't included on here is what I'm doing here on this one is we are, we are actually uh, modulating the pitch of VCO1. So this is going to be... Sorry, this pen is running out here. Bear with me, people. So this is the master... And that is the slave slave oscillator. So normally, I think what happens is it's the slave, or should I say the master oscillator is the one which is being pitch modulated. We modulate the pitch, but on this one, we modulate the pitch of the slave. And then we send the, the, synchroni the synchronization pulse into the slave as well. And there we have it. Again, thank you for uh, watching this, guys. If you do have any suggestions, or you can give me any pointers to other circuits, please leave them in the comment sections. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and share these videos with people. You know, everyone is a community. We can all learn something from each other. Anyway, stay safe, people. Catch you very soon.